we're starting this awesome top of the list award blockbuster at the intersection of us 87 and come on 191 but that's the signal is poor so it's having some issues it wants me to go that way then do like 20 miles turn around we're not doing that yeah i just stopped here this is my first stop i drove non-stop for like three hours and uh, let me just check uh, how far is the yeah this is called eddie's corner conoco a nice restaurant inside you know like a diner i had uh, some eggs with bacon and dry sourdough toast uh, very cozy nobody's wearing masks of course you know who cares <laughs> okay let's see my location is on so this is trucker path so i'm going like this on on 191 south and then i think it turns this way which is like highway 12 yeah and then three and right there there's a scale okay hold on closed all right i went through one one scale was open okay and here we go here we go going on like this and there's a flying j there because i need to call come on no signal on here it's okay this one just lost the signal like you would think right it's the same company this is Verizon this is Verizon but anyway I just want to see how far is flying J here or oh, 135 miles perfect so once we turn on Once we turn on uh, 90 past Billings, I think I'm going on 90 over there. Yeah, I'm going on 90. And then I'm going south. Yeah. And that's where the port of entry is. So that's where I'm going to stop. So uh, Flying J, what exit is that? It's right yeah i think there's one on this side one on this side exit 455 or fuel is 368 125 spots so that means it's pretty big so exit 455 455 455 let me just write it down here 455 that I don't miss it four fifty five anyhow so far so good this thing stays put except this is really flimsy I don't know but the um, that piece actually now it really holds the because it, it came it became like this you know but over here everything is tight and it's still <clears throat> lots of flexing in there anyway okay let's get going yeah once i get out of here it's probably this the signal will improve So finally my fuel mileage is is showing the regular regular numbers because remember I idled there right a uh, whole night actually like from 5 until 9 which is what 12 like a uh, 12 and 4 16 hours right in in uh, Leduc and so that screwed up all my statistics you know like 
for a long time the the fuel mileage was wrong because it was showing average and because of course so I idled for 14 hours and because I didn't do a single mile or kilometer right so for a long time it was like 100 liters per, per 100 kilometers then you know like 85 75 and slowly slowly it came to uh, so now we see 44 and I do have I still have like 663 kilometers to my destination so I don't think I'm gonna make it today but I told the guy we are loading we're loading uh, Tuesday morning And so I went through one scale, so I spent the night in uh, Shelby, got up this morning, I didn't want to drive it while it was still dark, and so I uh, ordered the permits for South Dakota, there's only two states I need, South Dakota and uh, Minnesota, because Wyoming, you have to order through the phone right that's what I'm gonna do next stop at uh, at uh, Billing Billings Montana I'm gonna call that port of entry and uh, so that I can get a reference number so yeah that's I'm gonna lose like an hour with this thing for sure you know because you have to call you spend like 10-15 minutes on the phone with a guy you see this thing cannot find the signal it keeps rerouting and so this is 191. So I'm gonna show you guys 191 South. And so I left the freeway. Um, I left Shelby, Montana there. Yeah, I got fuel after the permits, got coffee and uh, started going. And I left uh, the freeway in uh, Great Falls because that was the quickest way towards Casper, Wyoming, where I'm going. So you don't. If I if I would have stayed on 15, it would it was taking me west and south, and then there's a big detour, you know. So finally, the the tablet found the uh, the route. But it's funny that the, the phone found it much faster, you know? So I'm gonna keep the phone running, but I turned off, uh, I turned off the volume. So just in case this happens again. GPS yeah. signal lost. Yeah, did you hear that? GPS signal lost. Why is it not lost on this one? No, it's actually pretty bad as well. And so yeah, so lots of snow, but I made it and this was my first stop, uh, so I had a nice lunch, you know, quick and dirty, eggs, bacon, uh, dry toast, coffee. And the pumps in Shelby, uh, the dev did not work again, it's like, it was plus two, 34F, I said, why is your dev shut off at the pumps? Oh, we have a broken pump. I'm guessing like maybe uh, uh, the main pump for death is broken. But it's cool that now next to that pilot they have a little kiosk, you know, outside where you can buy espresso coffee. You know? So I left my truck at the fuel pump, I just walked like 10 meters, got a nice Americano. But it was pretty pricey, like a, a, a medium size was like 495 US. Whereas normally it should be somewhere around 350, 370, but you pay for the convenience, right? And then I, I had, the, after that, I had a couple of um, uh, interesting discussions with one was with a Kenworth dealer who sold me the truck and the other one was uh, was uh, with my friend from Virginia who recently purchased uh, extendable trailer wow a 
a big hawk was sitting on the grass. Too bad I don't have a big lens anymore. And the third discussion was brief before I lost the signal because I was in the mountains, like big hills, was with the Kaufman. Because I still I still have the phone number for the for the main engineer of the Kaufman, a very nice fellow. And uh, I think his name, yeah, na uh, named Daniel. I met, I met him back when they gave me that, uh, remember when my orange one had a crack and so they gave me a brand new trailer, that one was gray. And uh, I did a bunch of videos about that called the gray is the new orange. Meaning that gray was the new trailer, whereas my previous one was orange. So very nice guys to deal with, but the trailer was a bit heavy and uh, back then they did not do uh, low deck, low enough. Like mine was 24 inches, it's unacceptable. I have 22 now, 22 loaded deck height and that's, that's too much. I would love to have 18, right, 18 or at least 20. And so I called the engineer, he didn't answer, and then the sales guy, Tommy, who actually, who sold me that 55 ton back in, what was it, 2010? Yeah, when I was still with Landstar, that was my first um, RGN. It was uh, orange, more like school bus yellow, 55 ton. So this guy Tommy calls me and he's and I we started chatting. I said, you know, I'm just checking in to see what's what's going on with Kaufman. I said in case I decide to downsize or buy another one, I don't know. And so he tells me that nowadays actually you can buy an 18-inch deck height. But he says it's it's definitely heavier. I said, how much heavier than then a 22 inch basically they you know their standard is 24 inch like a 55 ton right and then if you pay them extra I think it's like last time it was like two or three thousand bucks you get you get 22 inch deck height and then if you pay them more I think it's the total of five thousand compared to the regular one they give you 18 18 inch deck height but the problem is that of course uh, their trailers are cheap and why they're cheap is because they use cheap steel and one thing I don't know if you guys know but cheap steel the difference between cheap and expensive steel is the weight so they came in the same you know sturdiness but for the cheap steel to give you that let's say 110,000 pounds in, in 12 feet they need a lot of steel and so the trailer is heavy and that's why let's say Trail King, Fontaine, you know, XL, they, they'll be lighter because they use, uh, the trailers are more expensive, that they use uh, higher quality steel which is lighter, so, well, more money. And so he says, yeah, we can, uh, we can build now a 18 inch deck height, but it's, it's uh, I think he mentions, I said, how much heavier? And right before we disconnected because of he of the hills where i was driving through i think he said 1100 which i don't think it's that much maybe he meant 11,000, but it cannot be 11,000 pounds so anyway so at least now the cheapest one he says the cheapest trailer back then in 2010 the cheapest was uh 55 ton was i think it was 51,000 us now he says the cheapest one is 67 67 which is still probably 20 30,000 cheaper than uh something like from fontaine or trail king you know <clears throat> uh so that was one discussion but i didn't call him back because he gave me, I was actually mostly interested about the, the deck height to see if they have anything now. But you see, it's, if the basic one is 67,000, that means they will want like 72,000 for the one with this 18 inch deck height option. 
which I think is already a bit too much because uh, you know you can buy a slightly used uh, let's say Fontaine with 18 inch deck height they have a model like that and then you know like a, a fancy trailer right like Trail King Fontaine like even Excel so it's a bit pricey now and then I called, uh, I called, um, I see this thing, lost the signal, and doesn't show me when I'm turning. Whereas this one, check this out. I don't know, how is it possible? The same provider, right? But this one says 26 miles to the left turn on US 12 East. So that means that this is working. Even though it sits here, down at the bottom, the tablet doesn't want to do it. It's probably the, the tablet has a worse, uh, you know, like a worse antenna or worse connections because, so you see, phones are more reliable than a tablet. And I remember when these just came out, some people wanted to try and use the tablet as their main device because actually this one now supports calling. Like if I can hook up uh, headphones you know like basic headphones I can I can use it as a phone and you can do video calling right if you use that whatsapp or whatever or even through the phone itself but you see it loses the signal quicker than the phone and the battery is not as good the battery life because the screen is so big it, it takes a lot of juice to keep it you know this bright but honestly I really like this this Samsung that I just got in the summer so I'm still debating whether to add my uh, Canadian SIM card because both of these phones this one and my iPhone they support uh, dual SIM cards but I still find that it's it's better to have two phones because see for example on this one right I, I, I use it as a navigation device um, and actually I can get rid of this and just use the phone for my e-log and navigation but Verizon doesn't charge me it's like 10 bucks extra a month but uh, I have a second tablet right from uh, Canada Rogers but I don't want to use the one in the States because they charge me what is it I think it's like 10 or 12 dollars Canadian a day uh, because they allow me to use my 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 Canadian plan so anyway so I, I called the Kenworth dealer uh, the sales the sales department and now there's only two people there and one of them I recognize the name is the guy who sold me this K Whopper back in 2017 it was the end of 2017 and then when I got the uh, when I got the truck it was March 18 2018 but the truck surprisingly already came out as a 2019 model and so this guy Chris is still there and so yeah he wasn't answering the phone I tried the other sales guy oh check this out I tried the other the other sales guy and um, nobody's picking up the phone you cannot even leave a message I don't know what was going on and then he calls me back because I guess he saw my number he calls me back so I said hey um, and he remembers me because he was able to pull up my truck specs right away right because we were talking about the price I said I'm pretty sure mine was like 246,000 And he said, uh, he said, no, your truck was 237, 237,000 Canadian. So basically what he, he told me a couple of interesting things. I was asking him, I said, is it true that they're gonna start making Cummins, uh, the option of uh, Cummins uh, big engine, X15? He says, no. But I read, like a friend of mine told me that there was a news release from Peterbilt about this, saying that Peterbilt will 
uh, is going is going to stop offering X15 because of the emissions problems. They they cannot keep it clean enough for this next tier of you know emissions. And I asked Chris about Kenworth. He says no. So I said, okay, can you buy a truck with a Cummins engine right now? He says, no. I said, why not? He says, well, it's January 22. Nowadays we allow 50% uh, must be Cummins, not more. And the rest must be Pekar. He says, that's our linea party. Our party guideline is you gotta, he says, we gotta, we gotta sell back car versus comments half and half. But he says, you, you, like, you do heavy haul, you need big engine. I said, yes, sir. Like, I could get away with a, with a small one if I was doing, you know, like 45 ton, 50 ton, but I still, even though it's not as good on fuel, but you want this power, you know? Shit, look, it started snowing again. And so basically he says there's a quota now because Cummins operates now at 60% capacity because of the shortage of uh, parts and people all because of this COVID situation. So that they, whereas before they used to make, let's say 10 engines, now they make six, let's just say, or they used to make 1000, now they make 600. And he says now there's a quota, how much they can sell and he says for 2022 we used up all available quota meaning it's january we still have 11 months to go to 23 he says you cannot buy like we're talking about canada we're talking about kenworth dealer in cambridge ontario canada this particular dealer Ken, kenworth it's called kenworth toronto where i bought this truck he says that's it no more Cummins engines are available, so you can buy a truck now, but the only power plant available is Pekar, which is, of course, a 13-liter engine. And I said, wait, so uh, that means that if somebody wants to buy a truck with the Cummins, they, they would be willing to pay good money for my truck. Let's just say if I decide to sell it all of a sudden this year, and retire to Hawaii, you know, and start chasing, chasing young women over there, I don't know. He says, that's correct. He says, your truck, let me check. And I reminded him, I said, four axles, full 605 horsepower, 2,050 pounds of torque, 2019, I said, very low mileage, uh, 339, 547 kilometers, which is roughly what, like 200,000 miles in four years and so I paid 237 I thought it was 246 so let's just say 240 240,000 Canadian uh, he says we were talking about the resale value and he says I know people that would give you 200,000 Canadian right now <laughs> man so that m makes me you know, all tingly and, and, and warm inside because it looks like I did a really, even though the payments were huge or still are huge, but I made the right decision to go with an expensive truck like this because it has value. It's just like that guy, I, I, I mentioned this, right? One, one smart guy told me, he says, that's how you Nope, you, when you prepare for retirement he says you just buy like one less truck and you buy a fancy truck that not that you want but something that you know will have a high resale value and of course usually it's a classic truck uh, by classic I mean uh, set forward axle you no know, big hood like W9 or P389 like people love these trucks or so even like a uh, freightliner you know coronado 
And so this Russian guy that was giving me that advice, he says, yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna buy maybe like a double, another, I think he was driving a Pete and he says, uh, maybe a W900. Because I don't know if people realize, but you don't pay for the truck with your own money, right? So um, let's say you have an older truck, so you can use that as a, as a trade-in. Well, you still, of course, you still, the only payment you have to make out of your own pocket is uh, the down payment. But then, you know, let's say you, 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 you move a load, right? Like, you know, it's not like a car. You bought a car and it's sitting in your, like my charger, right? It's not making me money. It's just, it's a fun item, right? Uh, oh, Junction US 12, 17 miles. So that's where I'm going. Chain up area. You're kidding, right? Zero C. And that's why this pavement is so rough. I can see, yeah, people have to use chains here when it's slippery and... Uh, and uh, if it's covered by snow. But lucky for me, we're at zero C, 32 F. But yeah, I better get out of here. I better get out of here before it's too late. This western, uh, you know, northwest US. My next load, I want to go south. Like I was joking, but last time, right? I said, I want to go to Florida or, here, or Texas. So anyway, this guy says that, I mean, sorry, I, I keep the digressing, but so you pay for the truck from your work, right? So it's like a house except it's as if you have a house and you have a you have a tenant right let's say you bought a house okay you had to find i don't know let's say ten thousand dollars you put it down now you have your mortgage and then you don't live there let's just say right you let's say it's your it's your investment property but you found a tenant and let's say your mortgage is pretty low i don't know thousand bucks a month and your tenant pays that thousand dollars, right? So now then, you wait, I don't know, five, 10 years, right? And then you sell that house, so it didn't cost you well, except in maintenance and stuff, but that could probably can come out, out of that, you know, payment. So it's the same with trucks. I don't think, I don't think many people realize this, but that's how you can make money with a truck, even though they say, you know, the rule on Wall Street is, they say, never invest into something that eats, eats, or needs repairs. So basically, don't invest into trucks, and don't invest into horses, which everybody knows is a bad advice because you can still make money with horses and you can make money with trucks. And so, you see, I paid, of course, I paid a lot of money over the course of uh, this four years, 3,500 Canadian every month, plus tax. And then I gave them, I think I gave them, um, they were asking for 10%, which was 23,000 bucks. I didn't have that, so I think I gave them like 10. So that's what I paid so far. So pretty much I paid the same, but now this guy says, hey, I, he, I asked him, what about trading? I said, if I decide to, you know, upgrade the truck and I can wait for the Cummins option, right? Because that's it. Let's say if now I decide to buy a new truck for some reason, I, 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 I cannot think of one reason to change the truck now. But let's say I want to do something crazy and let's say get a W900 with a 500 inch wheelbase. Uh, I can I can go there. We can sign the contract, right? I'll give him the down payment, and then we uh, agree on the trade-in price, right? And then I just wait because nowadays the it takes a long time to build a new truck, right? And since it cannot be now anyway, because I want a Cummins, you cannot get a Cummins. And so this guy right away says, "Yeah." two things he says first of your truck now if you were to order this Kenworth the one that cost me 240,000 Canadian in in the end of 2017 
240 Canadian. He says now it it co it would cost somewhere around 270 to 80 thousand Canadian because it's a heavy haul truck. I have those fancy fenders. There were 3,000 Canadian uh, PTO, right? Lift axle, 18 speed tranny, and huge engine, 605 HP. And that's why he says. If I were you and you really want a new truck, he says, don't do any trade-ins. You can, he says, if you put this truck uh, online, like a Auto Trader, you know, Kijiji or TruckandTrailer.ca, he says, people will buy it right away. <laughs> I said, really? He says, yeah. He says, in fact, like I said before, he says, in fact, I know people that will pay you two hundred thousand right now. So finally, finally, I made an investment that that's working and so yeah but no but let's the you know again so that's how you make money right so you buy a truck uh, you you down you use a, you put down uh, you put a down payment down right yeah I mean you put 10% down and then you use your work to make the monthly payments and then let's say when you're ready to retire you sell you sell the truck for a pretty penny and that's why you need a truck that's easy to sell. And for some people like me that don't like saving, you see, that's how you can you can do kind of like a forced retirement savings. You know? That thing is still lost in the woods. This one says 11 miles to the turn onto US 12. Okay, please don't be icy. Don't be icy. But it's still zero. But yeah, I can see why you would need chains in here if it was covered with ice. Because it is pretty steep. And so yeah, that's the good news about the truck. And that's the news from Kaufman. So now they offer uh, more, much more useful 18-inch uh, uh, loaded deck height. And the last thing I wanted to mention is my, my friend uh, Ben in Virginia, who recently purchased uh, an extendable trailer. Like he went for something of course, he, of course he's American, right? So he's no comparison to me. His loads are much more numerous than my loads since I can only do Canada to US, US to Canada. But he bought a 40 ton, a 40 ton extendable RGN with three axles. And what makes his trailer unique is that like I'm not that familiar with extendable trailers I don't like them because they're so heavy uh, but what makes his trailer unique is that his well opens up to 60 feet and he says uh, most trailers max you can do is 50 or 53 but so basically he says as soon as there's a load that's longer than that requires more space than 53 in the well he says I can pretty much name my own price and he says the only problem is yeah it's heavy and it's only rated for uh, 40 tons but he said I think he bought the trailer in December so he started using it no, he, yeah, he got it in December. So he said he already he did three loads where in these three loads he made enough money to pretty much is it. Let's say if he borrowed money to buy this trailer, these three loads made him enough money to pay off the trailer. So he made the same amount of money that he paid for the trailer. 
I don't remember exactly it was a used trailer but he got a great deal I think it was an auction but he was telling me you know we were chatting about this so because he's also he only has like a uh, three trucks he has a guys working for him no he said he has uh, four trucks but so far he was uh, he cannot find another driver so he has three guys working for him but we were chatting about this you know I said, well, so what do you like about your trailer what do you don't like and I shared some of my insights about my my 60 ton you know yeah it's heavy and I said I just lost that load uh, uh, that aircraft uh, tug tractor because I only have 26 in the well and they wanted 28 and I said sometimes I I lose loads because they're they're like 13 tall I said I would wish that this trailer was let's say 28 in the well and uh, 18 inches and then we started talking about my trailer and as usual once again I came back to a realization that this is almost perfect trailer <laughs> And Ben says, the only thing he says I would do in your shoes, he says, I would buy a deck insert. He says, even five feet, you know, five foot deck insert, put it in. And he says, I wouldn't even bother removing it. So you're, you'll be, you'll have 31 in the well. And that would give you, you know, lots of extra loads. And I agree with him, but I said, five feet would put me at uh, with the Jeep and the booster I'll be at 112 feet and in many places you need a pilot after 110 like for example here we're in Montana two-lane road if I was 110 or 111 I would need a pilot here even empty that's why that guy that you saw flew by with some kind of a machine yeah like a crane I think it was a crane he had a pilot because he's probably like 115 yeah because over 120 on freeways here you need a pilot or on two lane roads you need one pilot if you're 110 or longer so he had one pilot so i think he was just probably had a like a tridem jeep maybe you know like slightly longer than what i have because i'm 107 or maybe his truck is long, you know, like many guys in the States, right? They like longer trucks. So mine has a 254 inch wheelbase. Uh, if I was like, I know some people that have 305 inch, that would put me over 110. You know, and I would, I would need a pilot here. Like this thing. Come on. Oh, finally it found it. Now it shows me the distance. 28 kilometers to 12 east. 28 kilometers. <laughs> the, uh, what, what shall I call it? The uh, Samsung says 4.7 miles. Man. That's how you get lost in Montana. When you use a Verizon tablet that says that you're much further than you actually are. And so yeah, that was a couple of interesting conversations, you know, that I had. And so basically, yeah, Ben said, don't sell your trailer. Because again, I was, I was telling him that, you know, I took out this big loan, I need to pay it back. If I don't pay it back by the end of the year, uh, they will charge me. Like basically there was a loan during COVID uh, where if you pay it within two years, you only have to repay, uh, what is it, like 70, 75%. If you don't pay that 75%, like if you pay 75% of that loan, they forgive, it, they forgive you the loan. It's like amazing, right? And there's no interest. If you don't pay that loan off by the end of the year, in my case, by the end of this year, 22, they will start charging you interest for the entire 100% of the loan. And so I was thinking of, 
you know, changing the trailer so I can pay that, that sucker off. But the advice I got from my friend, he says, don't do it because he says it's the same situation as with your truck because I told I told him what I what I learned from my Kenwood dealer. He says it's the same situation because everything, yeah, it's you can make good money by selling, but then if you try to buy something new, it's also expensive, right? Like, like imagine if I sell this truck, right, that I purchased for two hundred thirty thousand Canadian, I would have to pay two hundred eighty thousand for the same truck. So which doesn't make any sense at all. And the same with trailers. Like I know my trailer was uh, with four axles, the 60 ton. It was, they gave me a big discount because it was sitting at the, at the factory in Alabama for two years, right? So I got it in 2018. And this was a 2016 model, which of course is not good because now when I sell it, people will think that it's instead of four years old it's six years old but the, the trailer was never used right it was just sitting there uh, waiting for me waiting for the buyer but anyway my price in november 2018 was 108 thousand us 108 i called uh, hail trailer just like i called kenworth to find out the situation to find out about the situation with the trucks I called Hale a couple of weeks ago and they told me this trailer now is 160,000 US so Fontaine 60 ton 26 well 22 inch loaded deck height modular with tandem plus two flip axles I have a little bit of battery life left. So now we're leaving US 12. <laughs> That's what they call them. What we should, we, I should call it dual channel GPS. Weight station. Man, how many weight stations do you guys have here? Wow, stereo. Okay, is it this one? Yeah, this one. Check this out. Oh. Well, and I like it, you know, when it's sand kind of like color that means that you're gonna be away I'm gonna be away from big hills so to my left is the area over there massive but it's not too uh, not too green like if it's dark green then it's really bad it's mountains but light green is big hills